Yeah, he uh, he's 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 obviously he's put a lot of weight on me, can I, Annie? But uh, he's probably lucky to be alive. He could do it getting a bit of weight off and looking after his son a bit better. But it might be comfort eating. I mean, he's had a lot of pressure on. Uh, he's had a lot of pressure on, and he's done he's done he's done a lot of he's done a lot of good, Mick. He's done a lot of good in boxing, but you know it's a two way street, in it. You've you've got to spot things when they're going wrong at certain times i think and maybe mick might be guilty of that i don't know but uh but i like i like mick and then likes him but you know it's a crazy business isn't it i mean one minute you can be we a fighter and you think that they're loyal to you and look at dennis with jamie mcdonnell he turned up at dennis's office on back of two defeats and didn't have a belt and it was skin. Now, before you know where they were, he was driving around in a brand new Mercedes. He was being paid a wage every week. Dennis took him to Olympics to mix him with GB team for six weeks to, to Beijing to get him into a routine of diet and training. He sent him out to Miami with Steffi Bull to Fifth Street Gym. All paid for by Dennis. And Jamie McDonald and Dennis went 13 and 0. British Commonwealth European are a world title in a soccer stadium. That held 10,000 people. They didn't even do a thousand tickets. Then he dumps him and goes to Eddie Earn. I mean, what? <laughs> do you know? I, I, I don't understand what. And look at Ricky Hatton. He made a fortune with Dennis, made over 30 million with Dennis. And then what, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? He goes and. Uh, oh, sorry, I might have that wrong. He maybe could have had 30 million, I think Dennis spoke about in an interview. They could have had a deal, yeah, we are them, if they'd have not fought Mayweather. But they wanted the Mayweather fight, didn't they? And Dennis said, no, you'll get beat. Uh, let's go around it and get a load of money and build your brand. brand. Build your brand, let's earn good money, and then we'll get Mayweather. But they jumped straight in, didn't they? Because they had a, a, a tight win, a close win, at welterweight. Do you know what I mean? They were complaining about Dennis putting him in a welterweight fight. So what do they go and do then? They go and fight at welterweight when they just comp they'd left because Dennis was saying, uh, you know, you're not what you're not. Sorry, they fought at welterweight, didn't they? Ricky Hatton moved up, didn't he? And he won, but he nearly lost. I forgot the guy we were now, but it was a tough fight, and they left because of that because they wanted the Mayweather fight, but that were at welterweight. But Dennis says, well, well let's, go that, let's go back to light welter, sign this deal with Bob Arum. It's all on channel this. You can have 25 to 30 million, four fight deal with him, and then we'll go for Mayweather then, earn all this money, build your brand up, then we'll go for Floyd. Floyd will have miles on clock. Do you know what I mean? We've got a stronger hand, but they didn't listen, did they? No. But, and this boxing, it's a crazy, crazy business. It's craziness that goes on. You know, fighters, sometimes they get people in their ear. I mean, for example, here's a prime example. Dillian White, he's two-year mandatory, yeah? Is he mandatory or isn't he mandatory? I don't see him suing the WBC and serving paperwork on them, do you? Now, when Carl Frotz were mandatory, they tried to dick him about. Make Hennessy serve papers on him to sue him, Right? Because Carl Zaghi wanted to fight somebody else with belt. That belt became vacant and Joe moved up. Now, I don't hear Dillian White with his four pay-per-views that he's had. I don't hear him suing the WBC for everybody keeps saying we be crooks and they're wrong and the, the, the bad people. Why don't Dillian White sue him? Because he doesn't look to me like he's exactly breaking his neck to get in there with Wilder, does he? A bit like Callum Smith. Oh, uh, what, were he three year? A month under three year or something. WBC mandatory or number one. He, they, ne they weren't pushing for it, were they? Callum Smith didn't want to fight Anthony Durrell, did he? That's the bottom line. They didn't want to get involved in purse bids and all that. Now, Dylan White's not fought for a European title, but yet he's had four pay-per-views. What's going on? It doesn't, does Dylan White want to fight Wilder? Or are they playing Endgame, hoping he's going to wait while he gets to Fotty? Does Dylan White want to fight Louis Ortiz? Nah. Does Louis Ortiz beat Dylan White? So I think the two guys that fought yesterday are the two most avoided and feared men in boxing. 
Ortiz and Wilder. Yeah, I think that version of Ortiz beats Ruiz. I think that version of Ortiz beats Joshua. And I think that version of Ortiz gives Dillian hell. And it's about whether Dillian's chin can take it. But Dillian probably stands the better chance of that lot of beating him. Wilder, he runs over everybody. Yeah, even Tyson Fury. <laughs> Does he beat Tyson? Yeah. Uh, look, I think it's. In, I think he can drop Fury two or three times. In the so it doesn't matter how skillful you are. That's three ten eight rounds already. So you've got to win everything else, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Right then, moving on from the Wilder show. Wilder's the number one heavyweight in the world. Do we agree on that, Terry? Right, so Wilder's the number one guy in the world. He's beat the guy nobody wanted to beat. He's beat him twice and stopped him. Eddie Hearn signed Ortiz, didn't he? Now, this is a problem for me. Scott Quigg is the WBA interim champion at the time. Ortiz is the WBA... Or was the WBA interim heavyweight champion. Scott Quigg, they put him in a fight, he gets a draw, but they, they upgrade him to champion, don't they? Regular champion. Yeah. Ortiz is the WBA interim champion. Eddie Hearn puts him in a fight in Monaco and the belt's not on the line. And the belt sort of just disappears, doesn't it? <laughs> but so did Eddie, did Eddie Hearn sign Luis Ortiz to mess his career up and keep him away from Joshua? Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. So, uh, I just wanted to get that in. Pardon? It was disgraceful, because what you really wanted to see was, that would have been a good test for Joshua at that time. That would have been the time to take to beat, not against Ruiz. Right, we're getting to the juicy stuff now. Pay-per-view, £25. Adam Smith says it's a Sky decision. Eddie Hearn said he wasn't consulted. Do we believe them? Yep, and I'll tell you why. Why? Yeah. Yeah. So a year ago today, you're there going, we're going to get two Joshua fights. We're going to get one in April and we're going to get one in September. They're both going to be in the UK, so we're going to make this much money from Sky Paper, from Sky, from Sky Boxing, on top of the money we make from films and stuff like that. So what happens in 2019? Joshua doesn't fight in April, he fights in June. He fights in America at a shit time for pay per view. So now, now your revenue projections are down. So then you go, we've only got one more shot at this, and that's in the rematch. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the money up. I genuinely think this was done well outside of Sky Sports. This was done well above Adam Smith's pay grade, well above Barney Francis's pay grade. And that tells you how little power these guys have in reality. It's come from the top brass then, has it, this? I think so, yeah. Because think about this, right? If you're Eddie Hearn, the thing you want to tell people is it did five million buys. But we put the price up to make it harder to do that. If what? what sorry, say that again, Terry. Go on. Yeah, so if you're a promoter like Hearn, you mm -hmm. would be able to say, look, Joshua B. Ruiz 2 did five million pay per maybe three yeah. million. Yeah, so Eddie Earn, do you believe Eddie Earn that he did had nothing to do with it? But it benefits him, doesn't it? Because they're they're on the upside, they're running around saying they think they can do more than two million buys, right? Now they've just done a million in, in New York, right? So this is Saudi, it's on at nine o'clock at night. If they do two million buys, that's fifty million in the pot just from the UK money alone. Now, Eddie earns 20% of that is £10 million just on that alone, isn't it? No, but Sky, so Sky Box Office, 
to just take half of that off the top. Yeah. So that leaves 25. And of that 25, Hearn has to get his 20%, which leaves about 20. And then Sky Sports have to get their cut because obviously they put some marketing muscle behind this. And then Joshua's team have to get their cut. Everyone has to eat off that 20 million. And so there's other there's other stuff in there's hundred and sixty is it other hundred and sixty countries are buying it as well, you know, around the world, is it hundred and fifty eight? Then there's the commercial in there, there's all magazine stuff and there's all sorts of incentives. There's a lot there's a lot of money involved, isn't there, with the fight as, as it is, like it's there's a lot no, of this one. So international rights won't be that lucrative because in America especially, the time zone doesn't work for them. In places like the Far East, the time zone doesn't work for them. So you're just, you, you know, you're just getting whatever revenue you can at this point. Yeah. So the pay-per-view is 25 quid. Will it, be, will it stay 25 pound? Will it will will certain fights be fifteen quid or like in olden days or a tenner? I mean Adam Smith keeps reverting back to well we gave you the KSI one at ten pound and this is twenty five. You, you know it ain't always going to be twenty five, but how can they use that as a benchmark KSI and Logan Paul because they made their debuts, didn't they? And they're technically YouTubers, aren't they? Not even that, Russ. If you didn't have a decision to make it twenty five pounds. You don't really, that tells me you don't make the pricing decisions. So you, you can't tell me it's not going to be 25 anymore. It might yeah. just stay at 25. Yeah, but it, Adam Smith's saying it, it, it could go up, it could go down, depending on how big the fight is. Hearn's pushing the same narrative. Yeah, but they don't have, well, they, they, if, they've, if they've already said, Russ, we weren't involved in the, in the pricing decision, well, then how do they know? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, <clears throat> so that's 25 quid then. We've got to like it all lump it. Johnny Nelson's come out and he said he spent some time with is it Joe Weller. Is it his name? He was a commentator on the KSI Logan Paul rematch fight. He was sat next to Adam Smith jumping up and down like a child screaming. Johnny Nelson's befriended him and offered him the chance to stay up at the galley pad and train alongside Billy Joe and Dominic Kingle and Johnny's offered to train him to fight KSI in March. Will it happen? If so, will Liam Gallagher and Robbie Williams fight on a white on a on a they'd have to get a professional license to do it. Because Eddie Hearn can't put a show on with... Uh, he can't do a white collar event. He'd, they have to have a professional license. So would Robbie Williams and Liam Gallagher get a board license? They wouldn't, would they? They'd have to go to Luxembourg, wouldn't they? So this is an interesting one because... It's on Jonathan Ross last night, wasn't it? Oh, mate, you know I don't watch TV. <laughs> but... Chavez fails a drugs test in Vegas and he's like, oh, well, we'll just fight in Arizona then. All this sort of stuff's happening and Hearn's showing that he doesn't care about these governing bodies. So, I don't think he cares. If he wants to do Robbie Williams versus Liam Gallagher, he'll do it. Whether they give him a license or not, he'll just find a way to make it happen. And that's the sad state of boxing right now. Mm. Yeah, do you, do you feel, do you, do you tend to agree with what Carl Froch has come out and said that his era, you know, and Lennox Lewis, people like that, 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 that his era is now no more. For example, I know I always revert back to this about wins of a world champions and blah, 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 but nobody seems to be doing like Carl Froch, Ricky Atten, Amir Khan. Cal Zaghi, they're not going on runs with good fights and I'm not saying Cal Zaghi had loads of good fights but 
They're not, they're not fighting the fight. Tyson Fury, right, beat Vladimir Klitschko four years ago and he's nowhere nearer to being a world champion than I am, right? And he, what, what is his profile now? He took drugs, he got depressed and Wilder knocked him down and he got up. Is that his thing now because he can't keep reverting back to the Vladimir thing. Same with Billy Joe, right? I was looking at Billy Joe Saunders' CV the other day, right? And somebody give me an hard time for mentioning this, but who is Billy Joe Saunders' best three wins? The Mew Rider and Junior. Andy Lee. Oh, shit, yeah. Andy Lee, Lemieux, Junior and Ryder. Now, out of all them four there, who would you say is elite? None. None. Out of Tyson Fury's world champions win wins that he's got, he's beat Cunningham and Vladimir, that's it. Who and Derek Chisora, who's elite out of all them? Uh, listen, Tyson Fury's a great. I, I know you're trying to dig him out. No, I'm not digging him out. Tyson Fury has got an elite win on his record, but the elite win was a guy at the end of his career, wasn't he, really? Well, 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 we weren't saying that before the fight. No, we weren't, so we'll give him that. But since then, what we've got, we've got Otto Wallin, Tommy Swartz, uh, Sarah Fasarifi and the other guy, Francesco Pianetta, the Italian sausage. You know, all these people, you know, he were going to beat, knock them out now. <laughs> stop stop trolling me. Point I'm trying to make is is Tyson Fury gonna fight Wilder in February, yes or no? No, I don't think he will. Right. So where does it leave Tyson Fury if he doesn't fight Wilder in February? Where does it leave the division if Ruiz beats from Joshua? Yeah. That's when everything becomes clear because if Ruiz wins, then the logical path is Joshua versus Fury, Wilder versus Ruiz. Mm. The two winners fight each other, two losers fight each other. That's how I see it going. If Joshua beats Ruiz, I don't think they made the Wilder fight because that's a three round demolition job for Wilder. So I think they'll look elsewhere. What, you think Joshua gets beat inside three rounds against Wilder? Yeah. Do you? Wilder just has to land. Yeah, Joshua's easy to hit, isn't he? Yeah. Tyson Fury's uh, very hard to hit, but he, if he can get to Tyson Fury twice, he'll get to Joshua, won't he? Yeah, and I think Tyson's more resistant than, than Joshua is as well. So Do you yeah. Do you think that uh, Joshua knows that Wilder will get to him as well? I, I think boxers, they know. They know, they know. Or not. Yeah, and you know what? Joshua will be sat there going, you want me to fight Wilder, give me $200 million, because that will be the end of me, that's the end of my career. Give me how much? $200 million. $200 million? Is that what you think it would generate? Yeah, just so that so they knock they knock it back. Yeah. But no, I, I genuinely think if Joshua beats Ruiz, he will look to fight Dillian. And he might have to vacate a couple of dollars, I don't know. But that'll be the next fight, Dillian or Huey Fury type fight. That'll be it for him. And then Ruiz, if he beat he gets beat by Joshua, he'll just fight while they get another payday and then they'll work out a way to rebuild from there. Yeah. Alright. Uh, so moving on then, uh, let's have a look. look I'm gonna, we're gonna go deeper now. We're gonna go into the YouTube business now. Obviously, I'm a YouTuber, and obviously, uh, you know, it's not as lucrative for uh, for wh where I am uh, uh, on the YouTube map. It's <laughs> hey, you're six months off an Eddie Hearn fight. Don't worry. <laughs> well, we're, we're gonna talk YouTube and people that are allegedly cheating with numbers and. They're turning off the comments section on their videos so that we can't comment. There's been a, there's been an article come out and it's upset Coogan Cassius. Uh, people 
I, I forgot the guy. Is it boxing scene or fight? I think it's fight. Up. They're accusing Ben Thompson from fight. Ben Thompson. Is he from England? I think he's American. Yeah, he's accusing uh, Coogan Cassius so of basically being a matchroom employee. Basically, isn't he? What do you think to that? And Coogan, there's a saying, they're not saying about the numbers and that, they're going on about the access, aren't they now? You obviously, you know about the expense I went to to, to have two billboards put up outside for two soccer stadiums to get Eddie Earn to come on my channel and it didn't work, did it, obviously? Because I would have asked him some serious questions now. That's my fault. I took a punt. It didn't pay off and, you know, I'm still crying about it now. But it's done, in it? Now, these people have got access. I ain't got a problem with Coogan having access. I've met Coogan several times. I think he's half all right. I think he's a hard worker and he's done his thing. Good luck to him. Do you think that when you turn IFL on now, they have link, uh, we have all these links to Joshua, Tyson Fury, Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn. Do you think that Coogan is caught in the middle of sitting on the fence and doing people favours and you think it's now coming to the stage where he's starting to be, be, get a lot of criticism for being sort of in their pockets so to speak what do you think have i put that right i'm not a journalist am i all right so, so if we go back to the article i think the issue with the article Yeah. They, they seem to be the people that Hearn has around him to, to spread the Hearn gospel. Yeah, they're the ones flying on the, uh, going on the train with him and on the aeroplanes and whatnot, aren't they? So, but, but there's, 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 same hotels. He's even admitted paying the hotel bills, hasn't he? No, so there's a wider issue here, Porky, which is the role of influencer marketing in boxing. So, the zone did that a lot. And what they did is they identified who the key boxing influences were, Michelle Joy Phelps being one of them, I imagine Coogan being another, Radio Rahim being another. What is Radio Rahim, Eddie Earn man? Well, we're not talking her at this moment, we're talking to Zone, because remember there's Golden Boy, there's K2, yeah. all these other things that plug in. Yeah. Um, I think Yvonne Michelle looks to be part of that. So, so the Zone would have these guys and they'd say, look, we will take care of you. We'll fly you to the location, we'll give you access, we'll give you this, we'll give you that. You just have to push the fight. Uh, Raging Babel's another one, I think. And, and so that's how the zone built his profile and said, let's just do it this way. Let's use social media. Yeah. So what ended up happening was over time, the zone realized it's just cheaper than flying these guys out and we'll just buy views on their fucking stations. Or buy the retweets, or buy the likes, so that the DAZN brand is everywhere on social media. If you're a boxing fan, you can't escape. And can you buy likes and subscribers and views and stuff like that, Terry? So you can buy a million YouTube views for two thousand five hundred quid. Two and a half grand. I spent more than that on two billboards. <laughs> and then you can probably get about a thousand retweets for I don't know two hundred quid. Yeah. Do you see what I mean, Russ? So, so if you can do that, why do I need to find people here, there, and everywhere when I can just manipulate social media? Yeah. So social media is being manipulated. And do you think, whereas, for example, uh, I didn't tweet anything. I got kicked off Twitter for the third and final time. I don't tweet, but my videos were going out on Twitter. Do you think that these trolls? just get rid of people like me and ultra tech sports so they just complain about us and just kick us off because uh, eddie Earn wants us off so mate if you think you have problems imagine you're a porn star so on instagram at the moment the porn stars are kicking off because they're all getting banned from instagram they're getting their accounts deleted why for, for being porn stars so the theory goes at the moment that these anti-pornography campaigners are basically just complaining about these profiles and they're doing it in big enough numbers that these women and men are just getting their, their profiles deleted. For doing so nothing, they've done nothing wrong? Done nothing wrong. 
But they've got a blue tick because they're famous in the porn industry. Yeah, all of this stuff. Like they, they, so they're, they're complaining about this. And so I think that, you know, this is what we mean about social media manipulation. Or you can put up a tweet and I can mobilise people to just block, report it, complain about it. And if the number's big enough, YouTube will just, or Twitter will just shut it down. Yeah, that that's that happened the first time with me, and they said, "Well, we've had of, we've had over four hundred and odd complaints." But when they looked deeper, they were on, they were off about 58, 50, 50 odd uh, accounts or something. So it's a band of people on social media that I don't know how Eddie Earns paying them. We're assuming ticket deals. I've heard ticket deals, but do you think that certain people, when they're getting certain subscribers, on YouTube, for example, boxing with AD. I think he's just come up. He's approaching twenty thousand subscribers. He received an email. He spoke about in his video the other day, saying that he's he, he was shocked, but he's in, he's been invited the, he, to have the opportunity to take up a press pass to press credentials. So sorry, to go to Saudi, and he, he was getting a new camera to go in that. Is that how they're working it? Because he's got a bit of a following, we'll get him on board, and is that is that how they do it? I think he's just going off his own back. All oh, right. So he, what? He made the email up then? No. no oh no. yeah. Uh, right, right, right. You can apply for a press pass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've already I've got knocked back on her. Yeah. Do you, do you see what I mean? So yeah. Getting the press pass doesn't mean that you're doing anything dodgy. It's yeah. But if you get if you get an email from Matchroom saying, "Would you like the chance to come to Saudi and have press credentials?" It means that they obviously know how many followers you've got on your channel, doesn't it? Yeah. They, they, look, because put yourself in Matchroom's position. There are probably a load of people going, "I'm not buying a ticket to Saudi just in case this thing falls through." Yeah. So maybe the uptake's low. So now you're Matchroom. You're like, "Who can we invite out here to come and cover it? Because we need the coverage from." people who aren't going to be associated with us yeah to spread the word so basically people like me and ultra tech we're just like peeing into an hurricane then aren't we <laughs> oh well i ain't got a passport no more <laughs> i won't go anyway to be honest i'm too uh stubborn and I've got a bit more about me. I'm not even going to Dennis's do on 4th of December, Ricky Hatton, because I'm a firm believer that Ricky Hatton and Dennis, they went 4-0 and and then he just decides that he didn't want to work with them no more. I don't like that. Now, I know they're still pals and Ricky can blame his dad, but the boxer should take charge. If somebody makes yeah, you a million... Russ, 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 Russ. There's a golden rule in life, yeah? If, if it's not your meal, you're not eating off that plate. Like, if Den and Ricky are cool, then you, you shouldn't be trying to... Yeah. Stick, you see what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, Let's see. Yeah, 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 you're probably right there. I just, I just don't. I just think it's a bit odd. I mean, what next? Are we going to have Jamie McDonnell? He's done not wrong to me. Are we going to have an evening with Jamie McDonnell at Matt Lockdown Football Club? You might have to, but right. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, I know this is what we've spoke about this before. This, these are sometimes when I get something in my head and it causes me problems, doesn't it, down the line, I suppose. It's a, so, so, and this is what I mean. Like, you having Ricky Hatton in your address book is a big tick in your, in yeah. your CV. Box. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you need all of those ticks, Russ, because you're never going to get the insight or the gossip or the stuff you really want to get until you get these insiders to like you. Yeah. Because they'll give you those little tidbits. Yeah, plus I can pick the brains. It's something I'm going to have to think about it next week. But uh, another thing that bothers another thing that bothers me is driving home from Matlock, because I won't be able to go there and not get steaming drunk. And, yeah, and, and that's uh, your dilemma, Paul, isn't it? Are yeah. Are you just playing this to win, or are you just playing to be involved? Yeah, I know, yeah. Well, I'm trying to play it to be involved at the moment. I think I've got that un got that tick at the moment, but I'm probably looking to uh, make a job out of it, I suppose, while trying to. If you want to play to win, you need an address. Yeah. No other way yeah. 
Yeah, you have to play the game.